or our vote for this week was spine. So we're going to start our four week spine series. Um, I will say that this spine intro tends to be slower paced than some of the really, really, really intense hip and shoulder work and other stuff that we've done. Um, so this is going to be like, it'll, it'll be a little slower, especially before you find some of the really big sensations. Um, you may find it on the first go, but if you're still struggling with like the actual segmentation of your spine, it'll, it'll take some time. Um, if you can't see kind of what I'm doing at any point, just let me know. Um, if, cause it's, I mean, like I said, some of the movements are pretty small. Um, so if at any point you're, you're struggling to see what the demonstration is, just let me know. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start with doing our full body cars. We can do this standing. And we'll start with neck cars. So take those hands out to your sides, squeeze the legs together. One by one, start to tune into your neck. Tilt your chin forward. Scrape that left collarbone. Tilt back. Try to find that end range before the pinch. All the way up and over the top. Tilt forward. Scrape back to center. And then we're going to reverse. Scrape to your right. Find that right armpit up and over the top. Keeping those shoulders down and away from your ears. Good. And as we do this one more time, I want you to try to see if you can, of course, without pain, go a little bit further on each of these end ranges. So as you rotate, what this should be like is almost like your body from your neck down or even from the vertebra down is like a pepper mill right where you know where you take the top and you crack it like that so imagine the head or the one vertebra on top of the other is like the pepper mill so it rotates and then when it can't anymore the next one rotates and it kind of goes down the line that way so you can feel each individual segment of your spine starting to rotate especially when you get back here If you do that, I mean, you may hear the segments of your spine rotating on top of each other as they like echo through your brain. Good. And find all the way back to center. Okay, so with your spine cards, the first time we go through this, we're going to do it the way we normally would. And I want you to just tune in to sensations. Make note of whatever tasting notes come up as you go through this. So we'll cross those arms over, flex our spine down one vertebra at a time. So when I say that, I mean, literally imagine from the back of your neck or just the base of your neck, tilt all the way down until you feel everything start to round. We're going to go to our left first. So rotate across to the left, leave that hip behind, tilt into that side start to extend back. Once you get back here, again, that pepper mill comes back all the way across the top, all the way back around to center. And reverse to your right, drop into that side, start to extend back. Feel each segment extending one on top of the other, all the way over and around. Back to center. Let's do one more. Turn to center so you can see. Flex forward. Rotate across. All the way up. Extend back. So what you're going to notice or what you may start to notice and tune into is that there's going to be segments of your spine that move better than others. From this point, we're going to refer to those as hinge points. And what we mean is that there's parts, there's a segment that moves better than the ones around it. So your body, instead of trying to move through that segment or through the ones that are stiffer are gonna use that one, it's like almost exclusively. So what I mean by that is if you watch right here, if I want to extend my spine, you can see me basically fold over that one spot, right? It's like right there. I just collapse. What you're going to have to learn to do as we do this 
is hold that spot steady and drive extension or flexion around that spot and start to tune into when you're getting it from all one place or you can start to feel the sensation where the segments actually open up and you get a stretch all the way through. Uh, let's go to our shoulders. We're gonna do both at the same time. So we're gonna start with our hands out to the sides, palms open facing the camera, bring them back across your body, close them in as far as you can. I realize this lighting looks like a, uh, a B movie. B movie. <laughs> like, a, like a bad horror film where they're trying to make like Tom Cruise look taller. That's what I was thinking of the horror film. I'm shot. <laughs> oh, the monster exposed. Moses parting the sea. <laughs> <laughs> we were uh, we were joking about like ways to start writing the classes when I start putting them up on the website. And the idea being from Mr. Clean on the on a scale from Mr. Clean to Deadpool without his mask on in levels of difficulty. So as the head color changes and it starts to look more and more gross and intense, that's how hard the class is. That's funny. Uh, let's go elbows. Flip them over, spin them down, pull the palms back up, spin it over. Remember the air is honey and you wanna hold that tension in those muscles the whole time. If you hear those snap, crack, snap, crackle, pops, it's totally all right, as long as they're not painful. And onto our wrists, because we're gonna be spending time on our, our hands, let's make sure that these wrist cars are really good. So as we start and introduce spine, one of the things other than hinge points that you'll have to start taking note of is when other things want to do spine things for you. So especially when we start to go through our cat cows, which we're going to spend a lot of time on today, um, you are going to have to be cognizant of your shoulder blades. So we'll actually do shoulder blade cars when we're on the ground. Um, so let's go to hips. So find your balance, grab something around to something, cross the right leg over the left, pull up into that hacky sack, find neutral, come a little bit higher, open the gate as far as you can before that leg comes around, internally rotate. And remember, if that knee needs to drop because something feels uncomfortable, you can always bring it all the way in before you try to extend. Now extend that hip and reverse, lift that leg as high as you can, dog at the fire hydrant, to open gate, around, and hacky sack, back across. Be careful not to dip into that hip as you go. One more time on this one. Does anybody have any new pain or discomfort today? No. Nope. Okay. Great. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and switch sides. Cross that leg over, bring it up into the hacky sack. Find neutral, open the gate. Pull that ankle bone to the ponytail. As you kick back, try to keep that knee as high as you can without pain, of course. Oh, I'm losing my balance. <laughs> and up again. Extend back. Oh, and around, very nice. Okay, so we're gonna come to the floor, we're gonna sit, we'll do our knees and ankles, and then we'll get down with our shoulder blades and our spine. So again, for this, if you need a backrest, backrest is totally fine. Find that knee rotation, dig the heel in, and we're just gonna go back and forth for this. Find that rotation squeeze those knees, try to find both extremes as much as you can. I intentionally wore really bright colors and made the, the happy lamp as bright as I could 
so that you could see, hopefully, see all of the spine stuff as it happens. Go ahead and switch sides. Call it a happy lamp. Hmm? You just call it a happy lamp? Yeah, yeah. The, the seasonal affective disorder lamp. Oh. <laughs> it's not funny, but it is. It's not, it's not funny, but it's funny. Yeah, I mean, it's a happy lamp. So there was a point during COVID, like the, the heart of the lockdown, where we were like taking our vitamin D supplements in front of the happy lamp to try to like, it's like, this is the sun. This counts. process of vitamin D into your body. This counts. This totally counts. Well, today you need it. Yeah, it is, it is gloomy. Okay. And then last but not least, let's do our ankles. So let's remember left knee is bent. Your right foot is propped up on your knee. And we're pushing through, pointing that toe as far as we can, pulling it around, trying to keep that working leg, the quad locked, so that it's harder to use the lower leg as an ankle. One more time. Very nice, and switch. Good, and very nice. Okay, so for our spine stuff, it all starts with our cat cow. Um, so this is gonna be the position that we're gonna start in or we're gonna spend a lot of time in. But in this position, the first thing that happens when we go to flexion is the shoulder blades start to do kind of this. And then when we go to extension, they kind of fall like this. So I wanna find those shoulder blades so that you can be very acutely aware of them as we try to move through your spine. So we're gonna to come to this position. We're gonna push the floor away until you feel those shoulder blades get as far apart from each other as we can. So don't worry about flexing your spine more, just push the floor away. From there, shrug them up to your ears, pull the shoulder blades to the ceiling, but your rib cage is gonna to drop towards the floor. Slide the shoulder blades to your back pocket and then push the floor away again. Shoulders up to your ears, pull them back, slide them down, push the floor away, okay? So now you're gonna find a little bit of an even pressure. So your hands should be right under your shoulders, your knees should be right under your hips find a little bit of even pressure through those shoulder blades. We're gonna move into our cat cow. I want you to hold as much tension as you can comfortably while continuing to move your spine. So we're gonna start in a flexed spine or cat position, angry cat. From here, you're gonna start with your waistband, intentionally wearing a black waistband. I don't know if you can see it, but intentionally wearing a black waistband to make this as obvious as possible where that movement is gonna start. So from there, pushing the floor away, start to pull the tailbone or the waistband up away from the floor. From there, start to spill the contraction through the low back into the upper back. So what's gonna happen here is that your head is gonna come back towards the ceiling. I don't want you to crank your head up. I want you to imagine somebody's pulling you back by the ears. From there, we're starting with the waistband again. We're starting to tuck the pelvis underneath, one vertebrae at a time, rounding, as we kind of go back to that dinosaur back or cat back, okay? So in that position, if it's helpful, one of the images that I've used to work with clients is the idea that I'm there, usually this works obviously better in person, but I'm there and I'm kind of poking you in your spine in, specific, in each segment, as you go, and that's your cue to move that segment. So if you imagine a tiny, tiny version of you walking up and down your spine, when that little tiny version hits each spine, each vertebrae, that's when you decide to move, okay? So again, on this, we'll start with that sensation and then we'll build in the next thing that I want you to focus on, okay? So first time through, it was just finding shoulder blades, Second time through, we're gonna to try to go one vertebrae at a time, okay? So let's set that position again. Whatever your natural position is, from here, we're going to flex the spine. From there, 
pushing through the ground, trapping a little bit of air in our core, holding the tension in our abs, we're gonna to start to pull the waistband or tailbone up towards the ceiling. Once each segment finishes its movement, you then move on to the next one. So it's a very slow, very small movement that cumulatively adds up to an extended spine. From there, start to pull the tailbone under again. Try to feel this little tilt out. It's a twerk. Yeah. You can't twerk without a healthy spine. At least, at least the last four digits of your spine. Okay. How did that feel? Pretty good. Were you able to were you able to tune into it a little bit more? Yeah, it was fine for me. Okay. So now on this last one, I want you to pay attention to the segments that move really well and the segments that maybe don't move as well. So what that will feel like is through, as you're going through and segmenting from one to the next, one will feel really easy and almost feel like it's going to happen early. So you have to try to squeeze your abs. It's, it's strange. Imagine if you could squeeze your abs in that spot. And as, as crazy as that sounds, it feels like an opposing pressure where one segment's going to want to do this, but because you're creating tension in that area, you keep it from extending too far. And then that segment extends, like the one just on the other side will start to extend. It's strange. And part of me sharing this sensation with you is that down the line, it will become this and it'll become much more clear. It just takes time to connect. So this last one, we're gonna do as much tension as we can. And we're gonna, again, we're gonna start in that flexed spine. So push the spine all the way up towards the ceiling, gripping the ground, pushing down through the knees, down through the toes. Start to pull waistband. If you notice one of those spots is starting to get real stiff, hold there and try to pull a little bit more from that spot one vertebra at a time, moving through. If you feel yourself starting to shift side to side. Find that extension, start to tilt the pelvis back underneath. What this should feel like is that those postural muscles on either side of your spine are moving, are getting a stretch as you squeeze and shorten them and then try to pull them back. Whew. Okay, so now we're gonna break the spine up into two individual pieces. So your first one, we're gonna work on lumbar spine, which goes from the base of your rib cage to right above your pelvis. That segment of the spine tends to be an extension more often than not. So finding a flexed version of that spine can be pretty difficult. The opposite side for thoracic spine tends to be inflection most of the time. So finding extension can be very difficult. And it also, the upper part of your spine is harder to move. Um, so, so you thought that one felt like a twerk. This one feels a lot like a twerk. So <laughs> forearms are on the floor, forehead is on the floor. We're shifting our weight forward so that our upper back is totally rounded, okay? From there, we start at the waistband and pull into extension. From there, we start at the waistband again and one by one, pull into flexion. So if you need to move the knees a little bit closer, you can. So we're gonna go through three reps here Try to tune into the segments that aren't moving as well and the segments that are moving a ton. Try to keep your upper back round as you do this. Keep your weight forward, keep pushing into the ground with your elbows. Okay, let's go three reps. Starting in a flexed spine, pull waistband, one vertebrae at a time into as much extension as you can generate. From there, start to flex. Again, one vertebrae at a time all the way in, pull your belly button in towards your, your back 
Try to drive your knees to your elbows and your elbows to your knees. Again, let's go the other way. Waistband to ceiling. And start to pull back underneath as you pull the front of your waistband up towards your rib cage. One more time, waistband to ceiling. One vertebrae at a time. Counting back from five to one. And then again, five, tuck under. Four, tuck under. Three, tuck under. Two, and one. Slowly ease back out of that position. Bring your forehead off the floor. Any tasting notes on that one? Did you feel a little uh, in your neck, your, like when you're pushing down, like right here? So right that now? can happen sometimes. So what we wanna do is if that's painful, focus on getting more pressure into your arms than into your head. Okay. Because your, your head is probably, is flex, you're probably flexing from that last cervical vertebrae and then putting pressure straight through it. So then it ends up just being stressful on the neck. Okay. But that's a good, that's a good note. Okay. George, any tasting notes? It was all right with me. Did it feel good though? Yeah. I mean, it, it didn't seem as intense, but I know you also said this one was not going to be as intense generally. So um, yeah, it was fine. Okay. So your thoracic vertebra is again, so now we're talking about from mid rib cage up to just at the base of the neck. So in order to find this extension, it can be really, really hard because it can be very stiff. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna come to this kneeling position. We're gonna sit our butt back towards our toes. You can be tucked under this way if that's more comfortable for you. Our only goal is to focus at this point on rounding your lumbar spine. So before we move into this and we go into our thoracic spine, what I'm gonna have you do, totally round, we're gonna take five breaths into our upper back. So specifically trying to close rib cage down to uh, waistband. And we're gonna take five big breaths into our upper back. So big breath in, big breath out. 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 So part of what I'm trying to do is get your rib cage stretched out a little bit because when we start to push down through the floor, your thoracic extension looks like this. But notice I'm still actively trying to keep my lumbar spine as rounded as I can and extend through my upper back as much as I can. So then from there, pushing back and rounding, trying to close that rib cage back down. Along our way, keep taking small little breaths. So if you notice, I'm talking the whole time. I'm still holding tension. And you'll hear when I'm working harder versus when I'm not and when the tone of my voice tends to change. So as you're doing this, you're sipping air along the way. So it's little inhales, little exhales. We don't want to hold our breath at any point as we do this. But that doesn't mean we're not working really, really hard trying to move our spine one vertebra at a time. So we're going to do this two more times, okay? So we're in this rounded position. We're slowly extending through our upper back, trying to pull the neckline of our shirt up to the ceiling without just cranking our head back. Round, 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 round. One last time, extend, pulling that Superman logo on your chest up to the ceiling, show off that bat signal, and then slowly start to round. So, in that, what you might feel is postural muscles along the sides of your spine firing up like crazy. You might feel sensation along your sternum in between rib cages, or in between, excuse me, in between ribs. So all of that is okay sensations. Did anybody feel pinches or pain in any of that? Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna come down to like a pseudo cobra pose. 
but your challenge is going to be not to extend as far as you can. Your goal is to find a segment that does not move as well and stay there. So what that would look like, I'm going to bring this down so you guys can see, is sphinx pose, cobra pose, whatever you want to call it. But what I'm trying to do is keep pressure on, for my ribs into the floor and slowly extend up until I find a part of my thoracic spine that doesn't move as well as another, which looks a little bit like this. So notice I'm not particularly far off the ground, but what I'm doing is keeping pressure on my rib cage into the floor and trying to take a segment of my upper back into extension. It is not an easy position to be in, but ultimately, so watch this. If I were to take my hinge point, which is right here, and I was just to extend up, all of it comes from that spot or my lower back. I want you to try to find gradually, find the sensation in the upper back. And you can even be like here as you start to push the floor away, finding that segment. So like right in that spot, I'm getting a ton of spine. So we're going to find that and we're going to breathe here. Usually want to try to find a position that you can hang out in for a bit because it is a little bit like a plank. Once you find it, return to that breath. And if you've seen any of my stories and Instagram videos over the last couple of weeks, it is really, really possible to train your spine at max effort, um, your greatest, safest effort, but ultimately it takes a lot of practice to build up tension to train your spine at max effort. Um, and if you, if you notice with this, a lot of what we're doing is linear, even though our spine car is rotational. So what I mean by linear is that like, with the, with the spine, the primary movement or the fundamental movement of the spine is flexion and extension. Whereas almost every other joint that we've trained is rotation. So we've always started with shoulder internal rotation or hip external rotation or knee internal rotation. Like we're always training some sort of rotational pattern with the other joints, but with spine, we work on flexion and extension to create that space because we're gonna come back to rotation at the end of class and see how our spine feels. So your pails in this position are gonna be squeezing your abs and increasing pressure into the floor with your rib cage, pushing down through the arms and elbows. You're, we're gonna just do one set of pails with no rails first, and then we're gonna do our second set of pails and rails, which is gonna find us pulling through our postural muscles in our back a lot. So let's start with our first set of pails. Remember that's squeezing where you feel that stretch. So imagine your abs pulling you down. We're gonna start at 10% and move to 20, 20% to 40, 40% 40 to 60 and hold. If you've stopped at 20%, totally fine. Hold it there. Remember your position that you're in should be holding you in that stretch. Then your abs, no matter how hard you crush them, should not be able to pull you out of that extension that you found. Holding for another three, two, one, slowly relax into that stretch. If you're having any trouble finding the stretch, what you can do is place a pen or a pencil on the floor under you, and you can actually line it up with your rib cage that in a space that coincides with a particular vertebra and keep pressure on that pencil, trying to extend back over the pencil. And it really does work for a really nice tactile cue for where to focus your stress. Okay, so from here, everybody's neck feeling okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now from here, we're going to start to increase pressure again. We're still only going to go to 60% at the absolute highest. So let's start at 10% to 20, 20 to 30, 40, 50, 
and 60 if you can get there. Holding for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Switch to rails. Try to pull yourself into a deeper stretch. Trying to almost lift your spine off the floor. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Relax into that stretch. And then I'm going to let you come down. Slowly lower to the floor. How did that go? Good. I felt it. Ooh. You felt it? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So as we do this next one, what we're going to do is we're going to push up to that same stretched position. We're going to find those postural muscles that we found on that second contraction. And then we're going to slowly reduce the amount of help that our arms are giving us. So I don't need you to go full and hold. What I want you to do is, because I want it to stay where we're working, find that stretch again, find those postural muscles around that area, and then just very gently between 10 and 40% of the load that your elbows were supporting is being reduced. And so you have to hold. We're going to try to hold those contractions for five to seven seconds. Okay. It, do you ever, do you got that? So imagine just like the passive range holds that we normally do, we pull up into our stretch and then we remove our support and try to hold there. We're going to progress towards that, but we're not going to actually remove our arms totally right away because I don't want you to fall. I want you to be able to keep the work where it needs to stay. So this can be very, very intense if you find this contraction. So pull the pelvis underneath, right? So right now you see I'm in a lot of extension. I'm pulling my pelvis back underneath me squeezing my abs, trying to shorten my abs as much as I can, and then trying to find that same sensation again, which for me is like right about here. And it's a total, like, so it's like right in that spot right there where I'm like, oh man, I'm getting a ton of work. But again, that could be totally, you could be up here and getting a ton of work and that's totally fine. So let's find that stretch sensation. Oh, find those postural muscles. Slowly remove the support and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly relax. And when I say 10 to 40%, you could slowly reduce how much help. But if you removed a lot of help and you lost sensation in that spot, I want you to really focus on keeping that sensation where it is. Ready? Big deep breath. Trap that air. Radiate that tension and hold it in those postural muscles. Five. Four, three, two, one, slowly relax. <sighs> one more good one. Pull into that stretch. Big deep breath. Trap that air. Radiate that tension. Remove that support as much as you can tolerate and hold. Five, four, three, two, one. Slowly relax and come down. Whew. That felt like a lot. I got a lot of good, really, really good work in that spot. I hope you guys did too. The spine cramps hit kind of like none other when you really find that postural muscle where it's like, oh God, I'm hitting that spot. Okay, so from here, we're gonna go back to our lumbar, or our thoracic block cat cow, and we're gonna try to find a stretch out of our lower back. And there's a lot of ways to do this, but ultimately it's gonna take some adjustments to find. So we're getting back to this position. We're totally pressing the floor away. We're trying to round our spine as much as we can. So you may find that you have to bring yourself in a little bit tighter and really push down through the floor to find that stretch. If you can't find it there, one of the best things that I've worked out with a couple clients is using something like this, like a table bench or even your bed and setting yourself up like this. So your lower back 
is hanging off of the table. And you can find a segment that needs more love than one or another. So get your whole torso on top of your bed or your bench. Then you can slowly, you can even do it with straight legs. You slowly let your pelvis fall until you find a stretch. So for me, I'm getting it like right through here. But the, the forearm on the floor totally works as well. So we just see if we can find that stretch. And then again, the, something a little bit taller works well, especially if you're having any neck discomfort in that low back, trying to find that low back stretch. You can even, so one more option, if you're having trouble and any trouble finding it, is give me something like this, which requires a fair amount of hamstring flexibility, but ultimately it allows you to round your lumbar spine a little bit more. So a gentle bend in your knees. You could even do this seated, I guess. I don't, you don't have to go straight to standing, but. So wherever we are, we're gonna relax into that stretch as best we can. So when we do our pails, what it's gonna feel like is we're trying to peel ourselves out of that and like we're trying to extend our spine. What we wanna to try to do is make sure that our setup is keeping us in that nice rounded position, right? We're not allowing ourselves to extend out of that, right? We're working as if we could, right? So when we're in this position, if we find our pails, which is that progressive angle, which is this side, start to squeeze again 20% or 10% to 20 20% to 40 40 to 60 so you're trying to peel your chest off the ground but from that spot holding for 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 once, slowly relax, see if you can find a deeper stretch. Remember, you gotta try to stay in it. As intense as this may be, or as uncomfortable, if it's uncomfortable, we can adjust position. But if, you're, if it's just an intense stretch, we gotta try to stay there. Trying to build familiarity with the position. Again, we're gonna go pails and rails. So rails this time are gonna be squeezing your abs, tucking your pelvis underneath and trying to push that segment where you feel the stretch up towards the ceiling. So first let's find our pails. So take a breath, hold some of that tension and try to extend that low back. 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, rails. Squeeze those abs, pull your belly button in through your back. Try to increase that stretch in that spot. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Slowly relax out of that position. Really come out of that one slow because that can be real intense first time you ever really flex your lumbar spine and put force through it like that come up slowly again so that you're not <clears throat> getting lightheaded feel a good some good work through your low back yeah. also kind of in here a little bit yeah yeah a little bit through the front side because you're closing everything down so much but it wasn't painful at all no 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 no, no. Okay. not at all you know, just Good. a sense. Good. Totally, yeah. Um, so what we're gonna play with now is a little bit of spinal flexion work in ways that, you know, might have been frowned upon in the past, which is basically like a crunch or a reverse crunch. So with that new space that we've created and that new regressive sensation that we've 
created, we're gonna work on pulling our pelvis towards our rib cage by rounding our spine towards the floor. So again, this is a really small movement, but when you do it progressively and segmentally, we're trying to go from thoracic spine, so like mid back, push down to the floor. Take the next vertebra, push it down to the floor. The next one, the next one, the next one. And then by the end of that, the waistband or the front of our pelvis is tilted up towards our face. Like we're trying to pull our waistband towards our rib cage. What you should feel is a ton of abs on this. What I want you to be cautious of as we do this is if you start to notice a ridge between your ab muscles, right? That's like, especially post-pregnancy, the diastasis recti is something that we could feel during this exercise. So I want you to be cognizant of more the spinal segmentation than the intensity of the ab contraction. I don't want you to actually do a sit-up because that can actually cause that diastasis to kind of tent. Okay? Mm -hmm. So as we do this, I want you to try to exhale. So we're gonna take a big breath in, and then little by little, we're gonna exhale and start to squish low back into the ground, peeling the tailbone up off the ground, pulling our waistband in and flexing our spine. From there, we're gonna remove as much support from our legs as we can. So you can go up to your toes a little bit, and then you're trying to hold in that flex spine position, holding for five, four, three, two, one. Plant the heels again. See if you can find that segmental flexion again. Slowly remove some of that support as if you were gonna pull your legs off the ground and hold. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, plant the heels again, find that segmental flexion, find a segment of your spine that maybe didn't move as well. See if you can flex through that spot. Big deep breath. Exhale as we go. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and slowly relax. So we're just going to rest in the spot for just a second. Let that natural curve of our spine kind of come back to position. Stomach okay, Kate? Yeah, I'm so weak in it. Well, but I was going to ask easy. you, the pushing, yeah. you want me to be pushing down through the floor, right? Yes. As we lift? Not? Yes. Okay, that's it. All right. Were you able to do it? Yeah, I'm just shaking a lot. Oh, yeah. yeah. Even, even with the amount of this stuff that I do, as soon as it's one of those things that when you, when you do it well, you load those tissues so efficiently because they're not used to being in that position that it's just like each segment of your abs, you can feel fire up. And then it's like, oh, God. Like, you're, it's so intense, you're just shaking the whole way. Yeah, okay. So what that helps us find is the two sides of the contraction that are going to help us uh, when we try to go from flexion to extension and extension to flexion. So those postural muscles that you found on the backside of your spine are going to be the ones that are trying to pull us into extension. Your abs that you just found are going to be the muscles that are trying to pull us into flexion. So from here, we're going to go back to our cat cow. So we'll roll over, come back to our cat cow position. And you're going to try to use those tissues that you just found. And you're going to try to feel out if there's any difference in space that you've noticed that you created as a result of that flexion and extension work that we just did. So we're going to go through three reps. The first time through, I just want you to go slow, smooth, and controlled. The second time through, I want you to increase the intensity. The third time through, I want you to do this at your greatest, safest effort. So it should take you anywhere from 15 
to 45 seconds to get from one end of your spine to the other. And I know that's a huge spectrum, but that's going to be dependent on how much tension you can create and maintain for the duration of the, the cat cow. Okay. So first one through totally relaxed, just trying to find out how your spine feels after all the work we just did. So let's start in a flex spine, start from the tailbone. I don't know about you, but right now my spine feels like butter. I did do magic. I did do like a heavy, heavy spine workout yesterday. But like after that, I just feel my my spine feels amazing. It's just like wee. It's like a water slide. Okay, so now let's come back to our natural resting posture. Let's start bringing a little bit more tension in. So we're pushing down through the floor, pushing down through hands, knees, shoulder blades into the ground, taking a breath, trapping some of that air, and let's find our flexed spine. Keep those shoulder blades where they are, a nice even pressure into the floor. Find as much flexion as you can give me. From there, pull the waistband. One vertebrae at a time, find those postural muscles. All the way through as we spill that contraction into our upper back. This is not max effort, but it's a lot closer. Once we find the end of our extension, try to pull for a little bit more. When you hit the end, you're at the end. Start the waistband. Find those abs that you just found for the first time. Try to squeeze each block individually. As you pull your lumbar spine into flexion, holding your thoracic spine into extension. All the way through, vertebra by vertebra, pull, 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 pull. Relax for just a second, because this next one's going to be intense. So I should, my head should go full Deadpool on this one, okay? Full red veins busting out of my skull, okay? Make sure you're still breathing along the way. Ready? Down through the floor, find our flexed spine. You're going to hear me kind of just all the way through. Big deep breath, trap that air, radiate that tension, start to pull. From there, once you've hit that end of extension, keep extending, keep extending, start to pull into flexion. That first thing is that tailbone tucking under. Start to feel those abs. Try to hold tension through those postural muscles. Pull, pull, pull. You see the color of my head? Accurate. Bright pink right now. What did that feel like? It was good. I felt like I could feel no more than I could the first couple times we did it. Like I, I knew what I was looking for to feel. Awesome. You know? Yeah, that's that's exactly the goal. Is is spinal awareness and starting to feel those sensations as they happen or don't happen, but then finding those tissues and actually being able to contract and control through those tissues. So that's awesome. That's really exciting. But so I other than the ab stuff, making the abs sore a little bit allows you to kind of pinpoint as it's moving through too. Do you know what I mean? Like, because we worked them, then that last one, you could feel the different muscles up your abs, <laughs> if that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Totally. No, that's, that's exactly, that's exactly what my goal is. We like turn some of those things on, turn them on, not that they're ever off, but bring some more neurological awareness of that tissue. And then you can go, Oh, I need this. I need this. I need this. I need this, this. And it helps you break things up a little bit more. 
George, did you notice anything different? Not really. I mean, I feel like it kind of like in my shoulders a little bit in some cases, but okay. I don't know. I mean, it was fine. Okay. Uh, so from here, we're going to do one really, really good spine car. So you can choose the position that you feel the safest to build as much tension in as possible. So if that's kneeling, that's fine. If that's standing, that's great. But I want you to build as much tension as you can generate. So like, not to be gross, but look at this. My shirt was totally dry when we started this and I'm like hitting out like crazy. So it's all about how much tension you can actively bring to the thing that we're trying to do. So I'm going to go standing with a really, really, really wide stance because this is one where I feel like I'm very aware of my hips. And I'm walking in, trying to squeeze the legs in through the floor. So you should get a lot of inner thigh sensation just in this position. So from here, let's find that hug. So the shoulder blades drop into flexion, one vertebrae at a time. This is your cat cow, right? All the way down, pull yourself into flexion with those ab muscles that you just found. From here, drag the elbows to your left as far as you can, point them at your left side. Flex into that left side. Start to extend back over that left, find those postural muscles all the way across the back, extend as high as you can, all the way across to your right, start to flex forward in that right side, all the way through and around, back to center, give me a tension check, squeeze your butt, drive your hips forward, squeeze your abs, pull to your right as far as you can, Flex into that right side. Start to extend back as far as you can take it. Find those sensations. Postural muscles scream in overdrive. All the way through to that left side. Start to flex forward. Around. Oh, and back to center. Oh. That one got the heart rate up. Okay. My watch thinks I'm working out now. <laughs> well, you sure are. Okay. Oh gosh. Let's find a position where you can comfortably unload your spine. So if that's child's pose, that's totally fine. Seated, laying on your back. Um, any of them is, is, is great. If you lay on your back and put your legs up your, your bench, that can be a really nice way to kind of unload your spine too. So kind of in this position. This is a total, totally acceptable way to recover from what we just did too. So we're gonna come back to our breath. We're gonna stick with our five second box breathing. I'm gonna breathe in. Hold, exhale, hold, inhale for five, hold for five, exhale for five, hold for five. So as far as recovery from this goes, I would highly, highly, highly recommend doing as many cat cows over the next two days as you possibly can tolerate. And they don't have to be as intense as that last one. Really think about the first set that we did on this, uh, after our interventions, like a little bit of tension, but still very aware of segmentation um, without being so tense that you feel like you're going to pass out. So the worst thing you can do now with your spine is stay in one position for the rest of the next two days, you know, slouch on the couch or, you know, 
George, sitting over your drawing table as much as you can tolerate, try to move your spine as much as you can um, because it will start to stiffen up and it'll get a little sore um, because we really did just work to create space in the, the spaces in between your vertebra, especially in two very specific spots, whichever ones you found for the flexion and the extension. But those guys need to be reminded that they have a job to do. And the only way to remind them to do that is moving. <sighs> nice job today, guys. Thank you, thank you for coming. Um, so next week, we're gonna continue with some flexion and extension with a little bit more advanced protocols on some of those um, holds and on some of the expansive areas, we are gonna bring in the pen or like a, um, like a gum eraser works really well too, because it's about the right height to give you a lot of feedback on those segments. Um, so those work really well just to like place in different areas and start to tune in and find your own hinge points. Uh, because you'll find areas where you can like drive a ton of pressure into the pen and then you'll find areas where you, it feels basically impossible to try to drive that pressure. So we want to play in the impossible spaces. Cool? Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And I'm looking forward to week two of the Spine Series. Again, if you can, it would be amazing to refer anybody who you think has this time um, available during the week. Anybody who you think can take a nice lunch break and would benefit especially from some back stuff. Um, I would love to have them in class. And as always, it's a $10 discount for every person you bring in or $10 off your session for the people that you bring in. <laughs>